Hi, this is Dr. Donald Pelto uh, talking to you here from Heal My Foot Wound Fast. It's the leading site online for information about diabetic foot ulcers and wounds, especially if this is your first wound. I'd like to help you out. Today what I'm going to go over is something called a wound healing case study guide. As you can see here in this video, the wound healing case study guide, uh, this you can certainly get access to at healmyfootwoundfast.com and just put your name and email there and I'll send it to you. Just wanted to quickly go over what's in here. Uh, these are some tips because I had a lot of patients, they, they wanted to learn more about their foot wounds, but they wanted it to be based on where the wound was. So as you can see here, there's five different sections for wounds on the toes, ball of the foot, middle of the foot, heel, and then ankle. Okay, so we'll kind of go over this. Uh, in this first section uh, of this wound healing case study study guide, we'll go look at the different causes of foot wounds. We're going to spend most of the time going over the different kinds of case studies for the wound that you may have to get your foot wound healed fast. Most people, when they have a foot wound, want to get it healed quickly. People aren't as interested in learning exactly why a wound happened. I'll go a little bit into the cause, but I just want to give you the bare bones uh, understanding of how to get it healed quickly. If you want to learn more, then you can certainly do that. Uh, they want to understand how to get it healed, and they want to prevent it from coming back. Many of these pictures are actually from my patients, or there's another doctor that contribute, contributed here uh, to put this together. And there's some internet sources as well. I use some of these wounds, okay? Uh, once again, to get more information, go to healmyfootwoundfast.com. So let's start by looking at some of the wounds on the foot. So let's start at toe wounds. Toe wounds are very important because they can happen on the top. See, like the top of the second toe here. Uh, here's another second toe. A lot of times these are all caused because of a hammer toe. You see how this toe kind of curves up and this bone is very, very prominent. There's also one on the tip of the big toe here. This is actually caused because it flexes down. The big toe would be flexing down and cause the problem. Okay, so um, here's just the different places that they can be. So each of them is treated differently. And here's another wound that's uh, caused here on the big toe joint. You can see it healed in before and after. A lot of these are actually caused by what, a condition that I call the, uh, the biomechanics of the foot. So if you see the big toe joint, if the joint doesn't have mobility in one joint, for example, this joint right here, where's the movement going to come? It's going to come either right back here or up here. And typically what happens is people get it at this joint here. And I'll kind of explain. Here's an example of something called hallux limitus. So you see normal joint function. function. You got the big toe joint. It lifts up. It's normal. Okay, as the arthritis happens, it starts to be jamming inside of this area, and when you walk, it can't move here or has limited movement, so more the pressure goes right here. As time develops, it may develop into a rigid problem, just like this one. And since it's rigid, you're unable to bend it at all, so all the movement has to come out of this joint. Increase pressure there, that's what can create the callus and then the, the ulcer. So how do, we, how do we treat this? We have to either remove this uh, arthritis from the joint, remove a portion of the bone right here to give it better, better movement, or if it's just uh, an isolated factor of having the tendon too tight, such as this one, we can just cut the tendon. So here's once again an example of one of the, the wounds here at the tip of the toe. If the problem isn't back here in the joint, with the tip of the toe wound, we can trim it back and uh, we can just cut the tendon down here. You see this patient has a, one of those specialized walking shoes. This is the tendon that's typically cut. It's called the flexor hallucis longus. It's the tendon that's responsible for pulling down the big toe joint. Uh, this is an example of how the arthritis can develop over time. Uh, with a joint getting less and less joint space and then eventually there's really no joint space in there. So that's the the first type. Now a type on the on the inside of the wound this once again is caused by a little bit of the mechanics but sometimes there can be a little ossicle, a little bone spur in that area that you can check on an x-ray to make sure they don't have. Now this is one of the, the bigger ones. These are very very challenging. I have a wound that, that I'm seeing a patient for right now and it's taking a, a number of months to treat this and it's because he has this this wound here on the bottom and it's very very slow to heal he's already had some surgery before on the other foot and I did a procedure to try to increase the, the motion to this area but try to take the pressure off of this and reduce the motion it's a challenging procedure because the patient doesn't have any feeling he has painful neuropathy and he walks a lot he doesn't have the best transportation so all that combined can be kind of a challenge some of the other toe ones that are a little bit easier to, to take care of are on the lesser toes we call them. Usually it's caused because of the, the, the crimping of the toes. Now there's two different types of hammer toes. There's one that's flexible where I can straighten it out and there's another one that's rigid where I try to straighten it and I can't. 
Okay, that's the rigid one. That one tends to get a callus and eventually a wound on the tip of it, such as you see in these toes. This would be one that's infected that needs to be uh, treated to remove all that dead tissue and it potentially even lose the toe if the, if the bone gets infected. Here's some other ones on the tips. Uh, one of the easiest ways of treating this is to take where the tendon is very, very tight and we can just cut the tendon. That's by using a little needle in the office. As well, we can do a bony procedure where we remove this section of the bone right here. If you, if you, let me just show you here. If you remove this section of the bone, I'll show you what you would do is you would pretty much just take this bone right here and just remove it. And when you take that portion out, it's going to help the, the area to heal in. Okay, so that's kind of one way of, of treating this. Uh, also, you can try different types of pads. Here's a pad that can go underneath the toes. This is good for, for wounds that are very small or just healing. If, if you actually have a wound, I don't like to put people in something like this. I, I prefer to take the pressure totally off with a specialized shoe or a cutout in the shoe or something to get the pressure off. This is if people have just a callus and it's painful. There are some specialized pads that can be made. This is, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Alex Botts who gave me some of these pictures. And these are actually a silicone putty that can be formed and molded to the foot to hold your foot in the proper position. As you can see, these toes are kind of held down. There's a lot of different devices that people try to buy online, and it's quite challenging because they spend a lot of money and they get very frustrated, and not many things really work for them. Okay, um, here's some more severe uh, uh, wounds. You can see actually in this one that the ulcer is, is down to the tendon. The challenge with an ulcer on the toes is that the tendon is very close and it can be difficult to heal. This one, once again, you can see the different changes in the skin color due to the swelling, poor blood flow, and a wound on the tip. Here's a special uh, offloading shoe to the front of the foot. Big challenge with these is that it may make you much more unstable. Uh, some pictures here of the, the hammer toes that cause some problems. Some other treatments for these hammer toes, you can uh, try to do some lamb's wool between the toes. You can trim off some of that tissue in there and you really have to just go back to, as we talked about before, some of these spacers to help uh, that. Uh, if you have a wound, be careful of any infection. So here's another spacer that you can use. Uh, typically this is, you can have a wound on the outside from rubbing in the shoe. And here's a here's an a example. You see all the bone is, is nice and intact right here. You can actually outline the bone. If you can't outline the bone, like in this one, there's actually a bone infection inside of that bone. And that can become a, a deterrent to, to healing. Okay, you may have to do an MRI. So that's the front of the foot. Now we're gonna go to the middle of the foot. So we talked about the toes. Now we're gonna talk about the ball of the foot. These are, are very, very challenging wounds to heal. And many times they're caused by, like we talked before, about um, biomechanics. So these wounds on the ball of the foot uh, are caused because one of the other joints isn't moving too well. They're increasing the pressure to the front of the foot. It could be a tight Achilles tendon. It, it could just be putting too much pressure and having a callus there, or some of the bones are more prominent. These can take a, a long time to heal. I, I frequently have patients that have these types of wounds for many, many months, and we try different things. But, but for the most part, we have to get the pressure off of it. So getting them off totally non-weight bearing with crutches is the best thing. If they can't do that, then a specialized uh, cast can help. But these are very frustrating wounds. They take a long time to heal. And if someone doesn't have any feeling, they don't know because it's not hurting. Okay, here's an example of, of a way we uh, evaluate the wound to see if it undermines. This is called undermining, where you kind of, um, kind of feel around with a cotton tipped applicator underneath it to see how deep it goes. Okay, um, very, very important to do. Here's an example of, of some of the, the x-rays here. Uh, a foot with these bones are all kind of slanted downward, and that puts a lot of pressure to the front of the foot, uh, making it very difficult to heal these wounds. Here's kind of the uh, a before and a after picture. This is a wound that we actually had to do some surgery to lift up the bone in, in this patient. Uh, the standard of care is still a total contact cast and that can be put on weekly uh, depending on the amount of drainage that you have. Usually in the first application you put it on for two or three days because it has to allow for some swelling. Once the swelling comes down uh, then you can put it on weekly until it's healed. Um, be careful making sure the person knows how to put it on. This actually doesn't look like a true total contact cast because uh, it's too bulky. They're usually a lot thinner uh, and right up to the skin. Some other ways to take the pressure off our uh, rollabout, this is a knee walker, and this is this is kind of a small piece of, of felt uh, for this wound. It should have been larger uh, to encompass the whole bottom of the foot, and you want to uh, cut the felt in a way that it takes the pressure off the wound. So um, when, when they put the pressure on, you actually have to reverse this cut so it goes outwards a little bit, so it, it's kind of moving the pressure 
out. So if you have a, a wound right here, you want the, the cutout to be in a bigger area there to offload it. Um, similarly, there are different types of um, ortho, reverse ortho wedge shoe that only has um, something in the front or ortho wedge that only has something in the heel. You can't really see that that well. These are um, good for, for patients, but they if you have uh, stability or balance issues, it can be challenging. Here's a, um, a walking boot with a removable peg, but what even works better is just a regular cam walker. Um, that's what uh, one of my colleagues recommended, and, and, and um, I found both these and the other ones work. I find even better, though, is just staying off the foot. If you can stay off the foot, you can get your foot wound healed a lot quicker. And uh, so these types of boots can be worn. Uh, a cam walker can be worn. What's the main purpose of that? The main purpose is, one, to slow people down. The second one is to restrict the ankle joint movement, so your ankle's not moving as much and you're not putting as much pressure to the front of the foot. And then, and then third, you just have to keep the thing on. Uh, the biggest challenge is when we give these to people, they tend to um, not stay off their foot, and they take it off and they walk around normally. So once again, um, here's the ortho wedge shoe. Uh, you don't want a patient to propel off. Sometimes I see patients and they come and they push off with their toes right here, and that totally defeats the purpose. Some of the surgical uh, ways of treating it, especially if the, the bone is, is, as we mentioned before, if the bone is, is too far down like this, we may have to cut through the bone and lift it up and help it find its place. That's called a V osteotomy. Uh, as well, you can just take out the bone that uh, we have to do on certain, certain patients of ours just to get the pressure off. Now be careful when you lift up a bone or you remove a bone, sometimes there can be a, a, a transfer lesion, we call it, to the area next door. Uh, an example of a, a, of a shortening osteotomy, a while osteotomy, uh, by in, in helping to shorten it, we are able to reduce the pressure uh, slightly over the area. Uh, in conjunction, if you have a very tight Achilles tendon, uh, such as this, this can increase the, the load to the front of the foot. And many times when we're doing diabetic foot surgery, we have to loosen the Achilles tendon. That's a big deforming force in the foot. Let's go to the middle middle of the foot. Uh, these conditions, the main one, I just recently did a, another podcast on, on Charcot foot. Uh, Charcot foot, basically put, is where you, you break your foot and you don't recognize it and you keep walking on it. It, it can be caused by a number of things, um, kind of beyond our discussion here, but you really want to be careful uh, if you have a red, hot, swollen foot because uh, that's probably not an infection. It could be. You should go see the doctor, but if there's no cuts in your skin, it may be the Charcot condition. It can be here on the outside or on the inside of your arch region where it collapses down. Uh, these types of wounds are challenging to heal. Usually, a uh, this is called a crow boot can be used, and uh, sometimes even surgery can be needed. Here's an example of one on the, on the inside of the arch region. Uh, this patient actually had to have a portion of the this bone here called the talus bone removed. So those are very challenging. I didn't go too much into the into the midfoot wounds, and, and the main reason is because they're they're beyond the scope here. Uh, of this guide. Suffice it to say, if you have one of these, you should probably, you are seeing a, a professional about it. Okay. Uh, going on to the heel wounds. These are some of the most frustrating wounds because ma many times they happen uh, due to just not being aware and uh, uh, pressure to the bottom of the heel. Um, this can be caused by a couple of things. Um, one thing it can be caused by is if someone has an Achilles tendon repair, let me show you. If the Achilles tendon is repaired, and uh, you, you, drop the, you drop the heel down. If it drops down too much, it can cause a heel ulcer. That's not the case of this patient. This patient here uh, actually was in a wheelchair all the time, having her feet on the, on the, on the ground, and, it, and the heel uh, opened up. We applied a couple of dermograph skin substitutes on there, and then it eventually healed. Uh, here's another one on the back of the heel. These I like to use a, a special boot to heal them up called a multipotus boot. It, it fits on, it has some fuzz in the inside, and it takes the pressure totally off the heel, as you can see in that area. They wear those in, in, in the bed. You don't want to walk with those, even though they say they are walking. You want to keep the, the pressure off as much as possible. Some of these egg crate ones, they work okay. I don't think they're as good as something like this. They're certainly better than just putting it up on a pillow, but there are, are some things that are, are better on that area. Um, I also just wanted to mention, these types of, of heel wounds can be challenging because you can have a wound not only on the heel, but you can also have a wound on the Achilles tendon region, and you just have to get the pressure off of it. And many times you have to add a pad, like a foam pad to the area, to help uh, take the pressure off before you get back into shoes. And then uh, looking at ankle wounds, ankle wounds are, are normally either caused by uh, arterial problems or the arteries or the veins. So if there's, if there's arterial problems, um, 
Uh, they look a little bit different than the than the Venus Venus ones. The Venus ones, the problem is the blood comes down and it can't get back up, and it kind of pools right around in the ankle region, and it gets kind of swollen and seeps out um, ooze to that area. Normally, it's caused by swelling. Okay, uh, so for the for the treatment of choice for that, we tend to do either a, a Pro Four. Um, I'm not sponsoring any one. This is just one of them that's out there, or you can do just a regular Unaboot around the area uh, to get down the compression and then get compression uh, dressings on the area. Um, so I hope you found that beneficial. Those are the basic uh, type of wounds. Um, I wanted to give some other resources. If, if you enjoyed this and you want to learn more, uh, this is a, a link to a quick start uh, guide. It gives you an easy place to uh, review the resources more about it. The nine step summary, it goes over each of the nine steps in depth. Uh, about healing your foot wound fast and, and the wound audit. Just some questions if you wanted to go through these. These are pretty extensive. It kind of asks every question you could have about wounds. And then a, a wound healing. This is a support group that I put together for people that want to get together and talk about different types of foot wounds. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll, I'll start by going to each of these. And I just want to kind of show you um, what it looks like. Let's see if this will, if I'm able to open it up. Looks like I, I lost my I think I can't, I can't open it up right now. But you'll have to um, watch it and go to these links here. Uh, once again, if you want to request this, it's, it's the um, Wound Healing Case Study Guide. You can find it on my website at healmyfootwoundfast.com. Hope you found this beneficial.